Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and we're back once again with the Packard Bell Legend 204 CD, computer I recently acquired. In fact, um, this is the same day I got it, the day I'm recording it. Um, computer um, does a, is able to do a power on self test, which is great, but it has trouble booting to the hard drive, and the clock battery is dead. Now, thankfully, the clock battery in here is a coin cell, unlike the earlier Packard Bell boards, which used the barrel batteries that would explode and ruin your board. So, the motherboard is um, presumably okay. So, what we need to do is, um, unfortunately, the battery is soldered to the board. And I don't have any soldering skills. Yes, go ahead and laugh at me. Ha, ha, ha. But what I do have, instead of soldering skills is this little Tataram battery that I bought for my um, Packard Bell Legend 20 CD back in 2015 that wound up just um, dying on me, the computer that is, so I never had a chance to use this battery until today. Now hopefully this still holds a charge after three years of sitting in my parts box, so first of all what I want to do actually is um, get rid of this redundant second modem here that we do not need. And I do have a um, diagram of this motherboard printed out which may come in handy so I'll know where to plug that battery into. By the way, this computer is ISA only. No PCI whatsoever. Here's the um, second modem. Definitely not going to keep it. I just don't have use for dial-up modems these days. Okay, gives, it gives me a slightly better look at the board. Now let's look at this um, chart here on the layout where the battery is supposed to connect into. goes into jumper 30, which is not far from the battery itself over here, but this is facing the other way opposite of the computer, so we can turn it around. <clears throat> that way it matches the uh, layout I've got here. So, the battery itself is um, behind all these um, drive cables. There it is way down in there. And right in there you see a little blue jumper. We were going I believe what we need to do is remove that jumper and connect the Tataran ba battery to that. So um I guess we'll go ahead and do that. Unfortunately, I do not have any good way to record this. I apologize. So you'll just have to uh, take my word for it as I do it. <laughs> Hopefully this will um, solve some of the um, weird quirks this system is giving me. Okay, jumper removed. And the battery, new battery that is, is connected. And if it does indeed work, I'll mount it properly in the system with some Velcro. So, let's pick some components up to it and see if we get any, any um, goodies from it. Alright, it's powered on. Monitor here. A little bit nervous here, folks, <laughs> to be honest. And I'm using the wrong keyboard. I'm that nervous, apparently. Okay. Well, at least it's giving a more um, reasonable year now. Last time it was giving me a weird character there. But the time is 6.24 p.m. So, 
1824. Day is February 15th, 2018. Will it detect the hard drive? No. Will it detect whatever this is? Yes. That should be the CD-ROM drive, by the way. I'm thinking um, that um, other than the battery, the hard drive might be dead and or the um, computer is not able to handle a hard drive this size. And it's also very possible that the hard drive itself is dead or, which I already just said, boy, I need sleep. <laughs> or the um, CD-ROM and hard drive IDE cables are swapped around. How that happened, we may never know. Goosebumps, sweaty goosebumps. Okay, failure fixed disk zero. We were not getting that before, so I think I think we've got a good battery here, folks. I think our battery situation has been solved. Now we just gotta get our hard drive situation resolved. So, um, unfortunately, I do not believe this is the original hard drive, so Format number will not be possible, unfortunately, neither the system credentials. Hoping to get those from here, but uh, that's just the way things go. So, um, let's head back inside the computer and do a little bit more tinkering. Okay, here are where the uh, CD-ROM and hard drive are connected. Um, on the left is the hard drive, on the right is the CD-ROM. What is interesting to me is that it seemed like it was detecting the drive, the hard drive that is, but it was detecting it as drive D, whereas the CD-ROM should be D. So, let me undo this. Now, let me... Uh, refer to our um, layout sheet here and see what is supposed to be the uh... okay what we just unplugged is hard drive connector and on the right is hard drive local bus connector which is where the CD-ROM is I think what we'll do for now is just simply reseat it the IDE cable that is Love that floppy drive noise, by the way. <laughs> yeah, failure fixed disk zero again. Kept the time and date, that's a good sign. But why is it seeing the... Okay, I want to start taking this further apart and see what all we got going on here. Now to remove the drive cage from these 3x3 Packard Bell cases, um, there are three screws we need to take care of. Starting with this one right here by the floppy drive. These are all Phillips by the way. Okay, put that right there. And we got one kind of atop the CD-ROM right here. We'll put that right there. And one more by the CD-ROM. Yeah, 
and we'll just give drive cage one of these. With a little bit of effort, we can um, get it out. And we'll flip it upside down because I want to remove this hard drive. Because I believe this is what is causing our issue here. There's only two screws holding it in. Normally there would have, there would be four, so yeah, this definitely was replaced at some point. I believe the original drive that would have come in this was 540 megabytes. So let's see what we got. All right, we got a quantum, just as suspected. Not much information on this. Two point one gigabytes. Okay. Now let's uh, grab a test drive. No reference to the um, racing game, by the way. <laughs> Got this one gigabyte Seagate here, which I know works. And this cable is not keyed, so we're just going to have to guess. Yeah, I think it will be like this, probably. Plug in our Molex. This is a 1.2 gig Seagate, by the way. Came out of another Packard Bell, I do believe, so... Uh-oh. Bet you I have the IDE cable upside down. That's easy to do on these systems. <laughs> okay, we're, we're good now. Wouldn't it be horrible if the drive controller on here was dead? Uh oh, same error. Okay. Hmm. To me, it seems like the hard drive is being plugged in to where the CD-ROM drive should be plugged into. And there was a CD in the drive in the CD drive, by the way. But that's just my theory. But that just doesn't seem right. But, hey, it's worth a shot <laughs> to swap these around. It's just a keyboard, don't worry. Okay, we're going to keep the CD-ROM disconnected just for the time being. Because its use is unnecessary at the moment. <sighs> Alright, and you probably didn't see that. <laughs> hmm. Now it's not wanting to post. Put the hard drive back connected where it's apologize, I hit the record I hit the stop record button by mistake, but um I put the hard drive cable back where it was, so hopefully we'll get a post out of it this time. Nothing. Did I just kill my computer? Okay, I unplugged the battery and it started to post again, so... I, I have the CD-ROM unplugged this time. And 
nothing. Okay, it sees it as drive D. Why does it see it as drive D? Well, let's figure this out. CD-ROM is um, unplugged. Hard drive is plugged into where the CD-ROM drive um, was plugged into. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Huh. I guess the drive cables were flipped around. Of course, I might be a liar. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I will um, flip these cables around, plug the battery back in, and see what we get. Okay, CD-ROM's still unplugged. Battery's plugged back in, but I do have the original um, hard drive plugged back in. Yeah, it's not liking that uh, large hard drive size, I don't think. I think I need to turn some of those settings on. So let's do a hard reset there. Okay, auto, enable, enable, Ugh. well it liked the um, one gig drive so maybe it's just not liking these uh, larger hard drives. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the uh, 2 gig drive hooked back up um, with the battery unplugged in the um, connector where the CD-ROM was and it says operating system not found. By the way, it was able to detect the entire 2 gigs um, all of a sudden for some reason. So, just to see if it's actually seeing the drive for real, I am going to use a trusty Windows 98 boot disk and see if we can get somewhere. Right, without CD-ROM support for obvious reasons. Virtual disk C. If, it, if the drive was working or if there was a partition on it, it would put the RAM drive on virtual disk D. Is it just going to stop there? Unlock works. Joys of old computers, folks. <laughs> okay, let's give uh, Macronus OS Selector a try. Where's my mouse? <laughs> oh, there it is. Um. Oh. Boy, am I stupid. I just let the keyboard fall on the... Um, on the uh, surge protector switch. Don't be like Billy, folks. Please don't be like Billy. Don't let your children grow up to be like an, like me. <laughs> Battery is still unplugged, by the way, just for some troubleshooting. I will be reconnected it later.
I also replaced the IDE cables in this computer with um, some that are um, keyed because uh, this uh oh installation program cannot find any hard disk. Hmm. Well, let's try this. Let's try something else here. Take this quantum drive. Perhaps it's just problematic. Hook this one gig Seagate back up. What I was saying was I replaced the IDE cables with some that are keyed just to make my life a little bit easier while I'm connecting and reconnecting all these drives around. It's never as simple as you think. Alright, take two. Actually, more like take 27. <laughs> well, good news is, um, hasn't caught on fire yet. Yet. Ooh. Still not seeing a hard drive. Oh boy. Ugh. Ugh. You know, I think some off-camera troubleshooting is in order, so hopefully this computer will be running properly next time you um, see me. Well, that did not take much time at all to diagnose. Um, in order for the hard drive to be bootable, you've got to have the battery plugged in. So, um, right now I've got the 1 gig Seagate plugged in. Let's power it off and swap it back out for the original, uh, uh, well, not original, but the hard drive that was in it when I got it. And hopefully it posts. Hmm. Okay, okay. I, I, I have a theory. I have a theory. When you swap the hard drive around, you got to have the battery unplugged. Let's give that a try. Okay, disconnected and reconnected the battery. Let's see if we get any life. Good. Not going to worry about the date. Okay, there we go. Save changes and exit. And this seemed the entire two gigs. I'm not sure why it wasn't before, but oh well. Oh wait, still have the floppy disk in. I want to see if it'll actually boot from the hard drive, assuming there's an operating system on it. <phone rings> Starting MS DOS. Okay. It's using the Intel Plug and Play Manager, which is a which is common on Packard Bells, so this might be a Packard Bell install on here. Okay, that's just because CD-ROM is unplugged. All right, putting into Windows 3.11. Packard Bell wallpaper. 
Okay. Packard Bell folder. Don't have any speakers hooked up, so we won't be able to hear this. But this is, I would say, a good sign. <laughs> Now, if, I wonder if by some miracle, the system credentials are somehow on this hard drive. Hmm, it would have shown up by now. Oh well. What you gonna do? The fact that it's able to handle this hard drive um, is a good sign because that means, yep, that means I should be able to use a CF card, which I have right here. Or we might not be using this because I have had issues with this in the past not working properly, this particular adapter that is. So, Are there any files on here? It's not like there's much. We have the Packard Bell demo on here. Yes, we do. By the way, this install is not staying. But I am glad that we were presumably able to get this going. So, let's start adding some of my uh, own twists and turns to it. <laughs> okay, let's unplug this hard drive. Plug this CF card adapter up and see if we can um, get it to work. Again, this particular adapter is a little temperamental, but hopefully we can get some life out of it. Well, we got lights on it. And it's like I'm going to have to unplug that battery again. It's not posting. It's a weird quirk. Okay, now it's posting with it unplugged. Plug it back in. Okay, let's see if it detects it. This is a 2 gig CF card. Huh, like it doesn't. Well, using a 2 gig hard drive won't be an issue, I guess. Um, I won't be swapping between drives and operating systems on here anyway, and I I'm going to be installing an Ethernet card in here, so I'll be able to transfer files that way. So I guess for now we can live without a CF card. Yeah, it's not liking it. Oh well. Okay, so I've um, re-added the um, 2 gig quantum drive that was in this system when I got it. That's what we're going to work with from now on until I can get a... CF card adapter that isn't broken. Um, so let's go ahead and mount the drive back where it was in the cage. Sounds like a really, really disgusting biker bar. The cage. 
Come on down to the cage. Now I've got to line up the screw holes. Was hoping for the original drive in this. Those yummy system credentials. But beggars can't be choosers. The fact that I have this system at all is a blessing. Yeah. I think it needs to be leveled. The camera angles have been bad in this video. I apologize. By the way, this computer is a local computer. Yep, it, the original, whoever owned it originally, used it right here in North Carolina. Which is pretty cool. Not only does it take two hands to handle a Whopper, it also takes two hands to install a hard drive in your Packard Bell. And I dropped the screw on the floor. Great. Let's see if we can get this to make contact. You know what? I think this is one of those off-camera type deals. Sorry, folks. Be right back. All right, hard drive's put back into its cage. So let's flip the cage back around. Uh in a way that doesn't get tangled. Oh yeah, I forgot about our old friend, the Tataran battery. We need to mount that somehow, and I have a solution for that, as you will see shortly. Okay. Screw the cage back in. I bet you I've lost a couple of these screws. I think that's maybe it is. this one back in for now. It's pretty secure though anyway without that third screw. Mid Gale are coming. Oh, you know what? Let's just not worry about that one right there. It's 
good enough for me. Now, as for our old friend, Mr. Tataran, I need to get some Velcro out of my toolbox. Be right back. All right, let's get to Velcroing. I've got this um, overly necessary industrial strength um, Velcro. <laughs> so, um, and it's a little bit wider than the battery. I need to get some scissors. Be right back. Okay. Trim the edges just a little bit. Bought this battery three years ago and it's finally gonna get used. Not be good if I cut the cable. This battery. So I'm gonna do this. Yes, I realize my wrist has been blocking the camera the whole time. All right, perfect size. Peel this off. And apply it to the battery. And we'll get some more Velcro. Ugh. Like so. Cut this back down to size. All right, let's uh, place the battery. I believe we can put it alongside here, the power supply. All right, battery is in its new home. Let me get a closer look at it. There it is. Hello, I'm Mr. Battery. Why don't you use me? I can charge your computer and keep its time. Oh, I know the Flying Scotsman's gonna isolate that like I do his weird voices. <laughs> so, what else do we need to do? Oh yeah, gotta add an expansion card. Remember that modem we took out? Well, in its place, I would like to add a 3Com Ethernet card. Right here. I've been doing this with everything plugged into the computer the whole time. It's a good idea. At least in theory. And I almost broke my monitor again. Okay, we'll just put this where that modem used to be. Now 
And I will keep the daughter card modem on there since it's original. I'm not going to use it, but hey, it's not getting in the way. Yeah, I think we're in. I gotta screw it back into place. Hopefully we don't get any nasty IRQ conflicts. Oh, typical. Drop the screw into the edge of the computer case. And I'll take this slot blank and just push it under the motherboard apparently. Try this at home, folks. Nope. Wasn't easy, but I got it. Let's try this again. Hopefully we don't have to go through that again. This is how, this card is how we're going to get this computer to talk with other computers so we can transfer some files back and forth. And there's our network card. Okay. we should test this real quick. Um, I want to see if the um, if this is going to conflict with the sound card which unfortunately is a real possibility before we button this up and start doing the software into things. Planning to do something kind of uncivilized as rudimentary speakers, I'm going to use my pair of headphones. Yeah. <laughs> I used a pair of headphones on a very sickly um, HP Pavilion from around 1999, several years ago. Somehow killed the headphones because the sound card was just that screwed up. <laughs> so hopefully we don't go through this go through that again, but this is a Packard Bell, so I put years and years of trust into these machines, so hopefully today won't be the day they let me down. Alright. You know what, I think with that battery it was posting all along. I just wasn't patient enough for the video signal to come up. <laughs> Let me put my headphones on. See if we get sound. I'm getting a hissing, but that's normal. And I'm going to put them slightly off of my ears just in case the Windows 3.1 startup chime um, blows my head off. <laughs> that would be bad. And we got a ta-da. Okay. Looks like our um, network card is not going to cause any conflicts that I know of. But keep in mind, though, it, the drivers aren't installed yet. So... Let's put the case back on and put it in its new home. Okay, um, as you can tell, things have been rearranged yet again here in the office. It's always changing around here, I tell you. But the um, Legend 204 CD is in its new home, working beautifully. Haven't done the restore on it yet. Factory restore, that is. Um, 
probably wondering what happened to the corner packard bell. It's still alive and well. It's um, right here. It's sitting right here. It's just taking a nice little rest. Um, I decided, um, you know, since I'm going to start collecting these packard bells again, um, I'm not going to have room to use all of them all at once. So I'm just going to have this kind of this area kind of set up to where I can swap between Packard bells like I could be using this one one week and then decide the next week I want to use the corner Packard bell and swap them back out and of course I got the ultimate Packard bell right here KVM'd with this and the iMac is right here um, where it's going to be used but it's currently not hooked up at the moment so let's get started on that restore process shall we and we will do that using my um, VGA capture card Okay, um, we're still here at the program manager. By the way, I um, discovered that the earliest um, files on here date from November the 23rd of 1997. So that must have been when the hard drive in this computer was upgraded and restored from its um, original master CD. I don't know what master CD that w could have been, but I do have one that I think will work with this. So I'm going to go ahead and put my boot disk in going to end our Windows session and reboot. Hopefully this will be nice and straightforward because it's late at night, I'm tired, and I want this done. <laughs> you know the drill. All right, praise the Lord, it picked up the, the CD-ROM drive. <laughs> and I'm familiar with this particular um, CD-ROM. I'm fairly certain that it will um, read recorded CDs. If not, I will um, crawl into a corner and wait for a few days. Or just replace the CD-ROM. <laughs> okay. First thing I want to do is format the hard drive. Make it all nice and clean. This has been a tiring day, folks. <laughs> I'm warning all data and non removal. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've been through this for years. Go ahead. Oh, this is going to be one of the slow formats, huh? So that's how it's going to be. Well, I guess I'll pause the video here and see you on the other side. Okay, we're at 99%. Sorry that um, the capture is a little bit cut off. Um, it's just um, a symptom of that. Um, it's I've got to enhance more for um, Windows mode. And I don't want to have to go around changing settings just for this restore process. So we will um, go up here and go ahead and start restoring.
Simple as that. The master CD is not in the CD-ROM drive. And it wasn't. <laughs> Again, don't be like me. Please, don't be like me. It's not a good life to live. It can get you in trouble. <laughs> okay. Now maybe we'll get somewhere. And we do not have a format number for this computer. It exists. I just don't have it. And I probably never will have it. So, we will just do a nice, good old-fashioned generic format. We've been through this before on many other Packard Bells, but we're going to do it again. And this may take a while with this being just a double-speed CD-ROM, but I think we'll be okay. And I may have just jinxed myself there. I don't know, but... um. I will again pause the video here and we will resume on the other side. Alright, restoration was successfully completed. Um, so far, so good. Um, I'm trying not to jinx myself here. <laughs> Alright, we'll get out of this. Huh, ejected the CD for me. How nice. Okay, in order for the changes made to your system to take effect, your system must be restarted. Please make sure that the diskette has been removed from the drive A, that the master CD has been removed from the CD-ROM drive. Click on OK to restart your computer. That is like, that is just so friendly. How nice of it. I'm so flattered. And I'm so tired. I'm getting delusional now. It's almost 10.30 at night. I've been going at... I've been doing so much today. <laughs> I'm tired. I need a break. Okay, but we're starting MS-DOS now for the first time. This is DOS 6.20. IMEM's got to test that extended memory. Mm -mm -mm. Boy, that was southern. Uh-oh. Why doesn't it like the CD-ROM drive? Well, that stinks. I guess this really wasn't the right master CD. Hopefully everything else works. Sound works. Welcome to Packard Bell's Navigator. Welcome to the main menu of Navigator, the easy way to get to know and use your Packard Bell computer. Explore the functions of Navigator by using the mouse or the tab or arrow keys on your keyboard. Well, at least that works. Let's go ahead and set it so it'll um, go to Windows automatically when we start up. And save settings on exit. Again, not sure how the CD-ROM wasn't picked up. But, oh well, you know what? This is as far as I'm going to go tonight. I'm going to take care of the CD-ROM off camera and um, set up the network driver off camera as well. So, um, until next time, this is Billy Core reminding you we have Let's Plays on Sundays, regular videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, sometimes a special video in between, and that if you want to support me on Patreon, um, go right ahead. The link is in the description for that. So, until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.